Mr. Kennedy, Bill Hughes from Indy Media. What's your opinion of the record of the Bush administration on the environment the last six or seven years that they've been in the office? Well, I wrote a book on that subject. <laughs> but this is, you know, listen, I've been disciplined as have most of these people over, you know, 22 years as an environmental advocate about being nonpartisan and bipartisan in my approach to these issues. We all know that there's no such thing as Republican mm -hmm. children or Democratic children. We all know that the worst thing that could happen to the environment is if it becomes the province of a single political party. But you can't talk honestly about the environment in any context today without speaking critically of this president. This is the worst environmental president in American history. There is no doubt, there is no competitor. If you go to the websites of NRDC or Sierra Club or any of these groups, you'll see over 400 major environmental rollbacks that have been promoted by this administration over the past four years as part of a deliberate concerted effort to eviscerate 30 years of environmental law and drilling in the Arctic is just one of those really bad ideas. And if I could follow up, Mr. Kennedy, what about the energy bill that was signed into law in August of this year? Is it true that that's the a giveaway to the... The energy bill is a boondoggle for the energy industry. You know, if we really want to solve our national energy policies, we've got to start with a strong conservation effort that's going to create jobs, it's going to end our dependence on foreign oil, it's going to end our entanglements with these Mideastern dictators who despise democracy, who are hated by their own people, and who we should have nothing to do with. You know, if you look at every religious tradition, these are people up here who claim to represent religious values, but they have undermined and violated every one of the manifold mandates of the Christian faith, of the Jewish faith, of the Muslim faith, that we care for the environment. That we treat nature as stewards, and that we treat our future generations with responsibility. And if you look at every religious tradition throughout the history of mankind, the central epiphany always occurs in the wilderness. Buddha had to go to the wilderness to experience nirvana and self-realization. Muhammad had to go to the wilderness of Mount Hera in 629 to wrestle an angel and have the Quran squeezed from him. Moses had to go to the wilderness of Mount Sinai for 40 days to, to get the commandments. The Jews had to spend 40 years wandering the wilderness to purge themselves of the 400 years of slavery in Egypt. Christ had to go into the wilderness for 40 days to discover his divinity for the first time. His mentor was John the Baptist, a man who lived in the cave in the Jordan Valley and dressed in the skins of wild beasts and ate locusts and the honey of wild bees. And all of Christ's parables are taken from nature. I am the vine, you are the branches, the mustard seed, the little swallows, the scattering the seeds. The reason he did that, and it's the same reason that all the Old Testament prophets, the Talmudic prophets, the Quranic prophets, all of them, every one of them came out of the wilderness. And every one of them were shepherds. And that daily connection to wild nature gave them a special access to the wisdom of the Almighty. And the reason they spoke in parables and allegories drawn from nature was that's how they stayed in touch with the people. They were saying things that were prophetic, that contradicted everything that the common people had heard from the literate, sophisticated people of their time, and they would have dismissed them as quacks. But they were able to confirm the wisdom of their parables through their own observations of the fishes and the birds. And they were able to say, they are not, he's not telling us something new. He's t telling us something very, very old. Messages that were written into creation at the beginning of time by the Creator. And we haven't been able to discern or decipher them until the prophets came who had immersed themselves in wilderness, learned its language, and come back to our cities to tell us the wisdom of God. This is where our values come from. And this administration that claims to be an administration of values, the only value that they really consider worth fighting for is corporate profit taking and everything else. Everything else is just a hollow facade that masks that one value. They call themselves conservatives, but they have torn the conserve out of conservatism. And we need to fight to take our democracy back. Thank you.